we all know that AI is going to be in our life one way or another. And you guys decided that 87% or to 89% said that all these AI related layoffs are just a forefront of people actually doing uh, job cuts just because they need to increase profitability. And that is all right. But now what we're going to talk about today is how AI is going to price gouge you and it's actually going to steal money from you at your most vulnerable spot at the convenience store when you're buying groceries. Because when you're buying groceries, you need to buy those. You can pick and choose what car you drive. You can pick and choose, you know, fast food and all these other places. But everybody needs to eat. And what they're going to do with you at the grocery store is going to be insane. So watch this video and we're going to talk about it. So first, let's talk about Wendy's. Wendy's has decided that, hey, we're going to start doing dynamic pricing in 2025. So according to them, they are, let me read you this. In February 2024, Wendy announced plans to introduce dynamic pricing in 2025, which is price model that adjusts price based on market conditions. Wendy said that it would use digital menus to implement dynamic pricing and that it will lower prices during slower periods and offer discounts, but not raise prices during peak times. Well, 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 I don't believe that for a second. I think that they're going to tell you they're not, but they're going to do it. So what they're going to do is probably jack up all the menus to a new high level. And then when there's nobody there, you can go eat at Wendy's at a discount. And that's what they're going to call cheaper rate. But they're going to bump up the price and they're going to start price gouging you at Wendy's. And, you know, that's all right. You know, like you don't need to eat fast food. You don't need to do that. But what if you're going to have that done to you when you're going to buy eggs? So let's watch this video that I have prepared for you guys and we'll see what they're going to do to hear this. Kroger is rolling out digital price tags that could increase based on how much they think they could get you to pay. I wish I was kidding. Kroger, the multi-billion dollar grocery conglomerate, has recently begun partnerships with Microsoft and the AI company Intelligence Node to create technologies to better price gouge consumers. Like the big bad wolf of grocery stores. All the better to price gouge you with, my dear. Together, the companies created the electronic shelving label Edge, a digital price tag that employees can change at the press of a button. What's the problem with that, you ask? If it's hot outside, we can raise the price of water, says grocery industry analysts. But that's not even where it gets particularly alarming. Cameras are going to be placed outside these digital displays. So when you go pick your cereal, Facial recognition software could be assessing your age and gender and determining how much you're willing to pay for that cereal based off of your demographics. What makes this all worse is that Kroger is a grocery conglomerate. Kroger is Fred Meyers, Food for Less, Ralph's, QFC, to name a few. And if the merger with Albertsons goes through, even more grocery stores will become Kroger's, meaning that this technology will be hurting thousands of Kroger's, meaning that this technology will be hurting thousands of people across the U.S. You have to hear this. Okay, so now we heard about this new strategy that Kroger is implementing. And, you know, from their executive standpoint, you know, I'm not going to fault them because they're in there to make money. But from a consumer and a customer standpoint, that is absolutely ridiculous. When you're thinking about it, and they're going to say, oh, you know, this guy walking in, he looks thirsty, so let's check up the price of water. And it's like, oh, this is this person is with kids, so let's check up the price of candy or Hershey bars or M&Ms. And then they're going to start doing these dynamic pricings. And yes, at the beginning, there's going to be a button where they're going to, where they can adjust the prices like that, you know, over, um, over, you know, like in their little office where they can adjust the prices and do all that. But that is in the beginning phases. In the future, five, 10 years, it's going to be done dynamically and you will see a price and you might shop with somebody else and they might see a different price because they're thinking to get you back into the store. So this is absolutely crazy. Check out, check out this little bird over here. Check out that bird. How cute. This little roadrunner. Makes the funniest sounds. So when you're going to be in stores and trying to, you know, shop for your family, 
do all these things and all of a sudden they're going to jack you up. They're going to get you for everything you've got. They want you to spend the most amount of money that they can extract from you. As this girl said, that or woman, that that person said that we're going to try and get you to spend the most amount of money possible. So if they think that they, you know, you want milk, they're going to tell you, hey, let's make sure that, uh, that, you know, they'll get milk. So we'll discount it and, you know, doing all these crazy things, you know, and for all these people that have been telling me, oh, you know, AI is, you know, far, far away and, you know, it can't do all these things. Well, you're right. It can't do a lot of things. But what I truly believe is it can predict numbers and it can predict outcomes, right? It can predict prices, it can predict inventory, and it can predict, you know, what's going on, right? So it could say, hey, it's 90 outside. So let's check up the price of ice and water and all these other things because people are going to need that, right? Oh, it's, it's Memorial Day weekend. Let's check up the price of hamburgers and, you know, hot dogs and all these kind of things because that's what you do on Memorial Day weekend, right? And instead of doing it on sale, they're like, hey, you know, and this person seems like he's not price sensitive, so let's just check it up. And, you know, all these things are slowly coming out. We're at the beginning stages of it. We're not at the, we're not at in the middle of it. We're just at the infant stage of all these new ideas that are coming out that these executives want us to, you know, to partake in, right? And so when you're looking at Wendy's, you're looking at McDonald's, they're all trying to get, to get you to spend more, right? And when I'm looking at it and it's like, man, you know, these, these price gougers, you know, are just going to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in order for us to spend more money per person, right? So they'll measure how many people come in and get to get that to the maximum capacity that they can. So if there's 100 people going in spending $100, they probably want to get that up to, you know, 110, 109, get 10% more to spend, right? And it is absolutely crazy. While they're going to cut, while they're not going to pay their suppliers more, they're going to try to cut prices to make a bigger spread, right? So it is absolutely crazy when all these type of things happen to, you know, American consumers. And then, you know, we're always the ones left holding the bag. We're the ones that getting to be like, oh, you know, that wasn't right. And it creeps up on us. You know, it starts off as a good idea and then it creeps up on us and we're like, hey, you know, we didn't want that. But it is partially our own fault because there are, when I look at grocery stores in Las Vegas, there's not that many options and there's no local mom and pop shops, really. There's only these huge, huge conglomerates like Smith's, Albertsons, and, you know, and that's why, you know, Safe, you know, Safeway and all these other ones are in a monopoly position, right? They're in a monopoly position where they can actually dictate price, they can dictate new rules because... You know, it's just a matter of time till Trader Joe's and all these other ones are going to catch on and say, you know, we might need to do the same thing. Because if this stuff works, then other companies will follow suit, right? So when you have other companies that are going to follow and do the same things, you know, do the same AI models, build these same softwares, all of a sudden, it's an industry standard, right? And if they can see a good ROI on it, why not do it from an executive standpoint? Not good for the consumer because you then are priced out of the market, right? And sometimes I feel like, you know, they should really focus on, you know, getting, getting, uh, you know, getting thieves out of there, you know, of getting people to actually not steal and do something about that. But no, we're just trying to get these customers that are paying to pay way more rather than, you know, cutting down waste, you know, discounting stuff that's about to expire for people that, you know, that have hard times and people that just steal in, you know, in broad daylight and just run out. There's no protection against that. And this is what I would love to see. I'd love to see something like, hey, you know, you've been here three times and you stole, you know, so much. Maybe they're not going to open the doors and say, hey, you know, you, you stole but no, we're going to start always coming after the customer that's paying and never after these people that are just, you know, robbing the store, right? It's like, oh, no, we got to protect those people. 
And these people that are paying, it's like, ah, oh, we got to make them to get to pay more. And the other, you know, and the other stuff will just ride off. And I'm like, man, let's start there. Let's start making sure that there's no loss. And if their food's going to go back, we need to donate it and make some loss that, hey, you know, you should not throw away food. We should give it to food banks, food shelters, and other stuff, you know, like, um, I don't know, churches, you know, homeless shelters and all those other kinds of organizations that can actually feed people rather than just tossing it out. And we're just not in a spot like that. We're just profit over everything. And I've seen people on TikTok and on YouTube shorts that went, you know, dumpster diving in stores like that and found like cans of beans and, you know, steaks and all these other things in the trash can. And so I'm just like, man, you know, why don't we place, put laws into place where you cannot throw away the food and actually, you know, donate it, write it off and save money that way rather than just go out and price gouge people with AI and starting to extract even more money from people just so, you know, you can increase profitability. I would see that, you know, if you're in a, in a super busy town and, you know, you're at the airport or something like that. But the, besides that... Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's just not interesting enough or this it's just not good enough for the consumer to kind of be put into that spot where I'm going to pay $3 per water and you're going to pay $1.90 because I need I was looking thirsty and you were not and so you're like ah let me just do an impulse buy, right? And impulse buys impulse purchases are going to be cheaper than you know necessities you know or you have kids you know the Kellex, the Kellex and cereal aisles are going to be way higher because you know you had kids with you rather than just walking through it and be like oh it's a dollar 90 let me just grab that no they're going to jack it up so we're at a very interesting point of tipping point i would say where ai will affect us regardless if you like it or not and it's not necessarily going to be for the better and that what's kind of freaking me out a little bit because when I'm starting to see that they're going to use AI to start, you know, predicting patterns and start, you know, taking taking more money out of your pocket because of artificial intelligence and patterns, then we're in trouble. We're in trouble because I do I did study psychology and I do know that we're habit that we're creatures of habits. You know, we're you know we go to the stores, we kind of buy the same things. You know, they. They have that data that, you know, we like what we like and we buy what we like. So when we're going to go out and buy, you know, beers and all these other things, we buy the same kind that we like. We go buy, you know, meat that we like. We go buy the brands we like. And now they're going to catch on and actually price gouge us at the register when they're going to know like, hey, you know, this guy really likes, you know, sirloin beef. So sirloin beef is going to be way higher than somebody that's constantly eating pork ribs and saying, hey, you know, let me try sirloin out. And then they're gonna be like, hey, you know, you got it. You're gonna, you know, do an impulse buy, so we're gonna discount it. But you know, you that's constantly buying is like, hey, we're not gonna give you the opportunity to buy because you're a regular. So super interesting where this is gonna go to. And you guys let me know if you guys think this is gonna be beneficial to us as customers or if this is going to be something that's going to really hurt us in the long run because I think it's going to really hurt us in the long run to just get more money out of us to spend more on impulse purchases that we already do and I'm trying to not do these impulse purchases anymore you know especially since you know the economy's not doing so great and they're finally starting to notice and they're kind of catching on and saying we're not doing so great so I'm not trying to do impulse purchases but hey, price matters in these type of scenarios, right? So now the question is going to be, are you going to be a more of an impulse person and say, hey, if, you know, pork is that much a pound and, you know, and goat meat is that much and goat meat, you know, impulse purchase cheaper, it's going to be so much cheaper than, you know, pork. So would you then buy that? And I don't know how that's going to, you know, work out because I also thought about, hey, they, you know, these self-registers at Walmart would have been actually a good idea. But then people abused the system, people put on different tags and did all these, you know, crazy things to kind of steal from Walmart. And I always thought like, hey, 
you know, Walmart, you know, is still making and saving money because they don't have to pay these people to ring up the items. But the, you know, the people that stole from them was so big that they actually lost money. And I said, hey, how much can people steal? And so these videos online showed that, you know, people purchased vacuums for $3.90 because they put a random sticker on it and kind of, you know, took advantage of the store. And the problem then comes to the person that is paying. It always comes down to the person that's paying because the person that is paying is always gonna front the bill, right? Because Walmart's not gonna take a cut, so they're just gonna increase their prices incremental, you know, like on average for, you know, like, hey, you know, we got 3% more losses this year, so let's increase the prices 5%, so we have the 3% covered with losses, and then we have another two extra. And the person that steals from Walmart isn't gonna care about it, but the people that actually pay is gonna start feeling it. So now the question is, why isn't everybody stealing from it? Because it's just unfair for everybody when these people steal money and they're not doing too much about it, right? Because in, especially in California, you need to steal at least $1,000 and in order for them to prosecute you. And it's like, no, you should, if you steal once, you should get banned from the store. If you steal again from the same store, then there's an issue. And it's never like they stole a loaf of bread. They're stealing like vacuums. They're stealing stuff that they can resell for big dollars. And I don't think people would steal, you know, a cheese sandwich or like a ham and cheese because they're so hungry. No, they're stealing like vacuums, Gucci purses and expensive items so they can resell it. And yeah, so this is my two cents. Trying to say, you know, a lot less so this is, you know, I have two favorite words, you know, and so those are kind of the words I'm working on lately, trying to say these less in my videos. It's cooling off, the wind is out. This was it for this video. I really appreciate you guys. Let me know if you noticed if I say so and you know way less. Just trying to, you know, improve, 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 try to walk. It's nice out. And yeah, it is not so hot and gorgeous day. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. Follow me on LinkedIn. If you have an article you want to send me or a video um, in the about section of my profile on YouTube, you can go there, click about, and then actually um, send me an email. I always appreciate the feedback you guys give me about, you know, information, articles, kind of everything. And so... I really appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe.